Memories of You, uh, music by U.B. Blake. Uh, wasn't he that famous piano player that lived to be like 103 or something? I don't know. I got a request on Patreon for this song, and I didn't think I knew it, but now that I've printed out the sheet music, which is down there in the description, by the way, you can print it out for free. Just click on the link. It'll pop right up. It might be fun to do it as a stride. Yeah. So anyway, let's uh, work through the chords just for a second. So one thing I always kind of like to do when moving up like this is look for a possibility of going like uh, if it's possible, if the melody fits it, I always li I like to go to like a C sharp minor with an E in the bass. And I think it'll kind of work here. So C sharp minor. It's, it's a weird change, but anyway, let's, let's think about Barry Harris for a second. When you get to a diminished chord, it can suggest, you know, four different dominant sevenths, a C seventh, and I think that was the only one that really fits here, or maybe an F sharp seventh, but you'd have to flat the five, an A seventh, you know, would be, a, would be an altered chord. Uh, You could kind of get away with that, I think. That's kind of an interesting change there. So A minor seven flat five. It, it's kind of it's kind of like F seven, right? Because you're up here. E flat major seventh. You know, we usually change those to a sixth, but you know, if you're very sensitive, it, it would be a nice chord with a major seventh. All right, and you know, if you want to use a little blues here, that E flat blues scale. And that, that's, that's actually a C blues scale, but I could do it. Do the E flat blue scale in there. And there it has a nice old fashioned sound with the two dominant chords there. No need for the two, you could just play a five chord if you like. So uh, just a C seventh is great there. You know, if you want the diminished, just put in that note, All right? And, and the melody is what you call a whole tone extension because you got, you know, a diminished chord, whole tone above any chord tone is always nice. Same thing here. It's like a D chord. Yeah. C. You could even just go to D. And then here we've got E flat. Put the eleventh uh, on a minor six. You can put in a nine. minor seven, flat five. Now that's a minor two, five, one. All right, so thinking in C, you know, using the C blues scale. And I've talked about this many times, but when you go down to that A flat, you know, it's the one chord, thinking in C minor now, the one chord down to the flat six chord as a dominant. Keep that blue scale. C minor and A flat. Don't hit the G though. All right, back to C minor. Uh, 
some drop two would be here. All right, anytime you're going up, up the scale from the from do re mi right there, you know you're gonna drop two is nice. And you know when you're doing like a two five one, it's a C minor to F. And then two five, but you know C minor. If F suspended, all you have to do is keep C minor. Just change the bass note. All right, then play F nine. And we've got F minor eleven. Use that Kenny Barron voicing or the College of Music, Berkeley College of Music formula. Here's a B flat seventh. Now here, you know, there's no melody note to deal with, so you could put a flat nine in there, like a sharp eleven or something, make it rich. All right. Now remember, I went uh, to a C seven, you know, channeling Barry Harris, then to a D seven, but I could put twos in front of those, so. Two five and two A minor to D and then now it's hard to get a good voicing for that because you know you're supposed to not leave more than a six except for the root in the next note there's supposed to be no more than a six so like if you go there that's a seventh you, you, your chord will start to sound a little bit empty. Now, I mean, this is not a rule that you have to follow, um, but you know, how you how you gonna how you gonna fill in that space with the bass down here and the melody up here? You know, you just say fuck it and do it. You know, <laughs> that's what I would do. Maybe that chord. I don't know. Let me see if I can come up with something better. There, and I think I did it. I've got a sixth and a sixth, so I did. I, I got. I got it. <laughs> Maybe in the first line you go. You know, keep it small, but towards the end. tone substitution for the upper structure here. Boy, jazz theory is just a mouthful, isn't it? All right, D seventh without the five. Just think of tritone, A flat triad. All right, now the flat seven chord, you know, this is the one chord, this is the seven chord, this is the flat seven chord, or a two chord, almost uh, always, you know, you can do a, the sharp 11 chord, which is like a a triad a whole step above. So a whole step above D flat is E flat. All right, so we've got. Uh... And here I, I would probably suspend it. Maybe like that. Make that a 13. You know, that way you're not playing the melody note again. Here, there's the root, maybe put the third in, and even the 13 will work. All right, I call it a 13 because I already have a seven, so if you add other stuff, you've got to think of it as extensions. 13, 13. And a six nine chord if possible. And we need a third. Or just even something like that, I think, is better. Let me try a little stride, all right? Now, usually to do stride, you know, you got to study the song and plan out your attack. Uh, but, uh, you know, unless it's, it's your style that you're familiar with.
It's a fun song, though. I'm going to stick it over here in my pile of songs to play because I like this one. It kind of reminds you of, uh, like, uh, Ain't Misbehaving. You know, so same kind of thing there. And like I say, you know, if you already play Ain't Misbehaving in a ragtime style or in a stride style, you know, this song might be pretty comfortable for you to play. So once again, uh, I want to thank my supporters over there on Patreon because they interact with me a, a lot and give me nice nice suggestions. And also, you know, YouTube, you know, it's part of Google and Google's got this uh, antitrust lawsuit. So I, I'm anticipating that the my YouTube revenue, is, which is not that much to begin with anyway, is going to drop down some. It already has. So I encourage you to like the video, subscribe. Um, and if you want to support the channel, you know, there's a PayPal link and there's also Patreon. But uh, you know, don't worry about it. Don't feel guilty if, you, if you're not contributing monetarily. You know, hitting the like button, subscribing, and, and writing a comment is, is very, very helpful to the channel as well. So I do appreciate all those uh, great people out there doing that. And until next time, have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye.